We've got Tamatoa and the Pygmy Coconuts on this tapestry. A shapeshifter. A shapeshifting rock. Consider me pulled in. Complete with Maui hair. Jaws of inescapable death. Not using this as a bedtime story. Oh, 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 thank you, Mother. That's enough. Papa. No one goes outside the wreath. When Jango Fett tells you what's up, you listen. They do such a great job of getting us to like Moana right away. She's the only little kid not scared of the Maui story, and she chooses saving Crush's kid Squirt over the pretty shell, clearly passing the ocean's test. And what an inspired touch to make the ocean its own character. While water has looked more photorealistic in other Disney and Pixar films, it's never been quite so inviting. Or blue. I know the score is telling me she's safe, but I'm still not convinced the ocean didn't lure her out there just to drown her. As the wave takes its form, notice that the water at the base drops in volume as if it's using the water right there. Just some amazing attention to detail. If you thought you liked Hey Hey before, go rewatch the movie knowing that Alan Tudyk did all the sounds for him. <laughs> Dumb chicken. The attention to detail inside the first 15 minutes is already super impressive. The water beads on her hand, the intricate and realistic flowing hair and lively water movement, both for which they created new specific effects engines. And just the beautiful pink and purple hue given to the island and its people at sunset. Come back from the sea. Don't walk away. And a sing-songy coming-of-age montage is the fastest way to get some wisdom from your grandma. But also end up drinking the Kool-Aid. That's good pork. I didn't mean, I wasn't, <clears throat> what? They're calling me, so I gotta, <laughs> bye! Classy exit. We should clear the diseased trees, and we will start a new grove uh, there. Problem solving skills. His best friend begged to be on that boat. Your dad couldn't save him. This is a similar setup to Finding Nemo, but with a slightly more believable conflict. The ocean is scary, but where Marlin was probably right, Nemo shouldn't cross the ocean, Moana can just use a bigger boat. Pig complice. All right, Disney. I know we have two living parents, but if you kill that pig. <laughs> phew. Some might be saying, what the heck? The ocean wants her to find Maui and return the heart, right? So why kick her butt so hard? Well, you've got to respect the sea. And get a bigger boat. And probably don't take the pig. Pig TSD. Why are you acting weird? I'm the village crazy lady. That's my job. Self-realization. Fun fact, this is actually a real-life mystery. Polynesians stopped exploring for a period of time, and no one really knows why. A demigod stealing the heart of the creation island and cursing everyone seems plausible enough. A quick civilization montage is the fa- Ah, crap, it's over. Hey. I guess you get points for consistency. Perish the thought a Disney movie could go on without a death in the family. But she ends up being more helpful as Ghost Ma or Grandma Manta Ray? Yeah, that's better. A little bit of expectation subversion with the mother helping her pack. And when the front woman of the Pussycat Dolls gives you the go-ahead, you know you're all set. I guess that's disembodied and melted Olaf? Ooh, that's some sharp looking bioluminescence. <laughs> Coconut pygmy shadowing. Dumb chicken. I mean, did you learn nothing from the loss of Wilson? You have to tie a rope to yourself. Ocean alarm, ocean alarm, ocean alarm, water alarm. Talk about a rough start. After Hey Hey falls off the boat and she impulsively jumps in to save him without dropping her sail, she falls asleep going in the wrong direction only to wake up and take a sharp turn flipping her boat. She's no Mary Sue. Hero of men. I interrupted from the top, hero of men, go. The rock, man, the rock. Do you think he hates being called that? I love the Dwayne Johnson. You know, Maui is a hero to all. You're doing great. Encouragement. When you use a bird to write with, it's called tweeting. Cute, but it's more like chicken scratch. What can I say except you're welcome? What the? The rock can sing? Stop. Stop commenting that he can't. That's very minimal auto-tune, and also, he sang in the ring. I just didn't know until I looked it up because I was impressed by how well he can sing here. There's no need to pray, it's okay, you're welcome. Ha. I guess it's just my way of being me. Also, who else could deliver such scathing sarcasm through song but The Rock? Looks like Hank lost another tentacle. And Flounder has Maui to thank for existing. Haha. <laughs> and a little goodbye moon men misdirection for you. For those unconvinced she'd be able to push over that statue and then parkour her way out of there, I'd like to remind you of this scene, where they established it to be exactly one of her gifts. Well, except the statue pushing. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb chicken. They're kind of cute. Intimidation win. Tighten the halyard, bind the stays. Uh, raise the missing mass. Ship the top sails. 
These guys learned from Mad Max that one of the most important parts of going into battle is your battle music. Whoa, even the score has to be an homage to the Fury Road Chase. Baymax! I killed your meal, I buried its guts, sprouted a tree, now you got coconuts! Gee, thanks Maui. Maybe if you hadn't planted an animal's innards to grow these coconuts... Ever defeat a lava monster? No. Have you? Lava burn. And while we're singing her praises, that line was ad-libbed by Ali. If you wear a dress and you have an animal sidekick, you're a princess. Honesty. Fish pee in you all day! And most humans. Ah, Disney, you couldn't help yourself. Parents have to die somehow, even if it's just a dream. If the ocean's so smart, why didn't it just take the heart back to Tafiti itself? Or bring me my hook? The ocean straight up kooky dudes. And that's a complaint that comes up often. There's clear explanations for the first crash. She needed to take the trip seriously, and had she left right then, she'd have missed her grandmother's speech and subsequent death. And then the next capsize lands her on Maui's Island. Beyond that, there's no evidence that the ocean is all-powerful. It can pick up chickens and people, it slows a rock once, but beyond that, it can't control the weather, and it doesn't seem to be able to control these huge waves either. Wasp? Doctor Strange? You guys in here? There's always a bigger fish plant. So, Lalo Tai is nightmare fuel, even if that is supposed to be Nick the Sloth and Godzilla the good guy. Another impressive attention to detail with the scuffs and scratches all over Tamatoa's claws. Rather be shiny, like a treasure from a sunken pirate wreck. Alright, so here's a bit of honesty about how this movie surprised me and how it's leading me to give a win to something I really didn't plan to because everyone's talked about Lin-Manuel Miranda and Hamilton enough. For those who don't know him, it's this guy, who for me will always be Albie from House. So originally I wrote a win in my head about how this song was clearly written by Jermaine Clement since it was a totally different tone from the rest of the film. But it's not. He just performed it. Which means Miranda wrote a song in Flight of the Concord style specifically for Jermaine. So, credit where credit's due. <laughs> Sven! Who had no business being down there. You did me a solid. Sincere thankfulness. Even in a scene like this, that's not an establishing shot when most everyone is paying attention to the foreground except for weirdos like me and the background is utterly magnificent. Took one look and, and decided they did not want me. With that giant baby face? Who wouldn't want the rock? Tattoo hugging. Did this scene make anyone else want to control Maui in some kind of infamous-like game? All right, even for me, someone who isn't totally in love with this style of music or musicals in general, I can't help but bob my head during this teaching montage. And a learning to wayfind montage is the fastest way to get Maui to finally be nice to you. That is literally the nicest thing you've ever said to me. So the animation of Taka is absolutely amazing, and it's no surprise that the lava monster and her ash and sparks and cracks are made up of so many different elements layered over each other. You can tell so much work went into creating her. What, do, what are you doing? Finding you a better way in! And now we further solidify that Moana is not a Mary Sue. She makes mistakes, and her exuberance often blinds her a bit. If you are ready to go home, I will be with you. Right about now would be your typical just believe in yourself speech, but Grandma Manta Ray has always taken a different, dare I say, unique approach. And it's not just reverse psychology. She genuinely cares for Moana and makes that clear. I am Moana. More self-realization. A little accurate time lapse of the Earth's rotation. I can hear the complaints. Just go around, dude. But it's made clear later that the barrier actually entirely encircles Tafiti. No! Hey, hey, to the rescue! Maui to the rescue! Moana! The ocean to the rescue! You probably noticed, but I just love the different water depths that create the perfect shape of a woman lying down. More honesty from me, I didn't see this coming. Could be because Grandma described Taka as another that wanted the heart, and I'm pretty sure they call it a hymn throughout the movie even though it has this long, beautiful, flowing smoke hair. Making the All Blacks proud. That's right, I can watch Grey's Anatomy and Rugby. What a beautiful scene. It's like they found this weird line between something looking so tangible yet not necessarily realistic. You know who you are. And let's just throw a handful of wins on for Auli'i's heavenly voice. Goodness. And let's go back and remember exactly why the ocean picked Moana. Besides having the same name, she shows empathy to the tiny turtle. This story wasn't about defeating the evil Taka. It was about seeing who she really was. And even though she thinks that she has it figured out, she's still willing to sacrifice her life for her people. In her vulnerability, she's able to reach Tafiti. Anyone else having flashbacks to poor Tomas the Conquistador? Hmm? The chicken lives. Hey, he's alive. So in the state I'm from, we have this collection of hills called the Sleeping Giant, and it just took on a whole new reality for me. 
hugging. More hugging. And just a tad more hugging. Get it? Because she's the shell chief, not the stone one. But I do actually love this mirror scene from the beginning. Alright, I'm one over. This music is great. Ralph! Can we be real? If my name was Sebastian and I had a cool Jamaican accent, you'd totally help me. Yeah, well, Sebastian didn't try to eat Ariel. The most interesting and compelling part of Moana is also its main theme, navigating a way to your true identity. The entire premise of the movie is Moana's hero journey to find Maui and assist him in destroying the lava monster and returning the heart to Tafiti. It isn't until the very end that Moana finally realizes why she was chosen. The ocean couldn't do it, Taka couldn't touch the ocean. Maui couldn't do it, he's just a demigod with his own problems trying to solve everything with might and magic. It's precisely Moana's humanity that allows her to connect with Saka. She can actually identify with not knowing or forgetting who you are. That's why the ocean chose her, and it's a large part of why this film is so good. I did not expect to like this movie so much. My wife had been wanting to watch it for a while and I kept putting it off. Once you let that music into your head, you find yourself singing your welcome in the shower. But Disney has this way of putting emotion behind songs that end up catching me off guard. I'm not generally a musical lover. Music lover, yes, but I tend to get annoyed when the plot is moved forward through song. Unless it's Sweeney Todd, and then I'm all in. Anyway, point is, Moana succeeded in getting me to enjoy the music. They captured the sound of the Pacific Islands really well. Or, at least to the best of my knowledge about them. And they definitely reward repeat viewings. To an extent, as I'm sure anyone with young kids can attest to. If you start singing, I'm gonna throw up. It's been mentioned that Moana isn't the typical Disney princess, and good on you for making a more relatable role model. Especially of the action hero variety. And at this point, it's almost as if Disney is afraid to go back down the Prince Charming love story road. Which is fine. I'm on board with teaching young girls they don't need to be saved by a knight on a white horse. Either way, I'm liking these friendship stories they've been building. And who doesn't want to be friends with Dwayne the Rock Johnson? I, I do. I, I would like to be friends with him. Boat snack! Maui is an interesting character. He's set up as the trickster, then the savior, and then it's revealed that he's just another broken person trying to find his way and accept his identity. Trying to find love and acceptance to replace the affection of his parents. In the end, he actually learns more from Moana than she from him. And Auli'i Cravalho being one of the youngest Disney princesses has to carry a lot of this movie alone, and she does so wonderfully. She created a likable character with some really honest moments and a few funny ones. Because you are a chicken. And like pretty much all Disney movies at this point, the humor and comedic moments weren't lacking. What can I say except we're dead <laughs> soon? I am still falling! <laughs> I'm probably partial to the rock style of humor, but Jermaine's entire time on screen was hilarious. Pick an eye, babe. I can't. I can't concentrate on what I'm saying if you keep... Yeah, pick one. Pick one. <laughs> and really, Alan Tudyk's Hey Hey was the comic highlight for me. Two movies in a row with music numbers. That was a bit of an oversight. I wasn't really thinking about The Jungle Book being a musical, but oh well. Next week will be different. At least, I hope so. Anyone care to venture a guess? Feels like you're distracted. No! No! No way! Really? Because you're looking at me like I have a... <gasps> Ah, uh, shark head.